Hello, readers and writers. I am Anthony L. Manna, otherwise known as Professor, Grandpa, Tonio, the book guy and the writing guy. And today I, I'm here happy enough to be introducing you to Lucas and the Game of Chance, my newest book, illustrated by Donald Babish in pen and ink. Lucas and the Game of Chance is about a flute-playing boy who befriends a dancing, mysterious snake who later even talks. Lucas lives on an island in the Aegean Sea with his mother and father, a poor family. His father, the fisherman, his mother, tends a stall in the marketplace. And I'd like to show you, there's his father and there's Lucas playing his flute. Lucas and the Game of Chance. And I thought that what I would do is to take you to the section where he meets the snake who, by the way, he names Lambros. So, this is the section that begins this way. Some days, Lucas roamed the seashore alone, not far from home. He, sat, he ran alongside sandpipers as they scuttled across the beach, their shrill cries stirring up a rowdy chorus of wheat, wheat, wheaty, awk. Lucas screeched, echoing the gull's cries. He flapped his arms and swayed like an ancient seabird, circling and diving through salty gusts of wind. Awk! Awk! He cried and took, and took off down the sun-drenched trail that brought him to the island's ancient seawall. Once there, Lucas clambered up to a narrow hollow where he took a seat and watched the flurry of activity that swarmed the harbor. By day, merchants from near and far came ashore, hoping to sell their wares to the island's eager vendors and shopkeepers. From his perch, Lucas could see trawlers and tall ships moving to and fro from the harbor. Flots of squawking gulls soared and plummeted above the boat's misty wakes, their webbed feet barely touching the sea's churning surface. As was his habit, Lucas soon began to play a cheerful tune on his flute. He slowed or quickened the rhythm to keep pace with the gull's sweeping movements. Just when he started mounting a rapid series of high notes out of the corner of his eye, he spotted a snake weaving its way toward him. Lucas played on, slowly trying to catch a glimpse of his visitor. This snake looked just like the snakes Lucas and his friends came upon in the island's rocky hillsides. From the snake's markings, Lucas could tell it was a leopard snake. Islanders welcomed leopard snakes into their gardens. From the ancient tales came the belief that leopard snakes brought good luck to households because their fangs dripped no whip venom. Leopard snakes were favored as pets throughout the island. In the bright sunlight, the snake's silver scales glowed with a trail of dark edged reddish brown stripes. Close to each of these marks was a black splotch that made Lucas think of little shields protecting the snake from its enemies. Of all the snake's features, Lucas could see at first it was the snake's eyes that held the boy spellbound. The eyes, large, round, and black, stared so intently into Lucas's own eyes, he wondered if the snake was trying to search his thoughts. The snake came to a sudden stop at Lucas's feet, 
and slowly raised its thick body to its full height. It stood on its wiry tail and swayed from side to side in harmony with the changing pulse of Lucas's surging rhythms. Lucas slowed the tempo and brought the song through its final measures. At once, the snake sank to the ground and slithered across the same stony path that had led it to the boy and the delightful sounds of his flute. Before retreating to its shelter, it twisted its head around and peered at Lucas, its tongue flickering a steady beat. Once the snake had slipped away, Lucas drew in a breath at what he saw on the path before him. In its wake, the snake had left behind a gift of not one, not two, but three gold coins that shimmered in the sun's brilliant light. Lucas called out a thank you to the snake. My prayers have been answered, Lucas said aloud while making the sign of the cross. Like his mother and father, he often prayed for an end to the suffering the family was made to endure with only a few pennies to see them through each and every day. The snake's gift means there will be enough food on the table and an end to our aching stomachs, Lucas thought. It meant his mother could repair her stall at the village market where she sold fish and herbs. It meant his father could buy supplies to overhaul his rowboat and replace the worn oars. It meant his family could mend the chinks in the cottage walls and patch the cottage's crumbling foundation. It meant they could return the kindness of neighbors who had come to the family's rescue when their pantry had gone empty and only a fish, a few fish, had made it into their basket. Now they could reach out to neighbors who needed their help to survive. It could be his family's mission. In less time than it takes to blink an eye, Lucas wrapped the coins in the cloth he used for wiping down his flute. He gr then grabbed his things and sped down the trail to the dock where he waited for his father's return. Lucas's heart was nearly bursting with excitement from anticipating his parents' surprise when they would first lay eyes on the snake's precious offering. The second his father stepped onto the dock, Lucas rushed headlong into a story about meeting up with the snake. Not once did he take a breath until he came to the part where the snake had left in its wake not one, not two, but three gold coins. When Lucas's story ended, the two hurried off to their cottage to bring the news to Lucas's mother. As fate would have it, the father announced, all the while unfolding the cloth that held the treasure with trembling hands, the spell cast by our son's music has brought us a stroke of good luck. Oh, my son, Lucas's father continued, on this wonderful day, your gift of music has touched our lives with a special blessing. Let us offer a prayer of thanks, Lucas's mother said. Seconds later, Lucas joined his mother and father at the makeshift altar that stood in a corner of their cottage. They knelt before the small statue of St. Lucas, the family's protector, that stood on the altar. St. Lucas, holy guardian, please accept our gratitude for the help you have brought to us today, Lucas's father prayed. We share with you our endless gratitude for giving us the means to survive, said Lucas's mother. And for the snake, Lucas added, praise the snake that found its way to my music, that gave me three gold coins and a better life for my family. Amen, they said together.
if your luck holds out and the snake comes by the seawall to be entertained by you once again, Lucas's mother said to her son, be sure to play a song to let the snake know how deeply grateful our family is for helping us pull through these difficult times. Early the next morning, as soon as Lucas settled into a seawall lookout and began playing a string of simple chords, the snake emerged from, the, from its burrow and slithered over to where Lucas sat. It raised itself taller and taller and stood with an arm's length of Lucas's stare. The snake held Lucas steady in its sight. I'll end there today and return once again, to introduce you to different sections of my story, Lucas and the Game of Chance, Anthony L. Manna, also known as Professor Grandpa Tonio. The book is illustrated in pen and ink by Donald Babish. It's been a pleasure reading to you. See you soon. Go well, readers and writers. Keep reading, keep writing.